I want to tell you a story of a quirky, weird kid who grew up really wanting to be, guess what? Bill Gates. <laughs> and I'm not done. And an astrophysicist. And she did neither because she got distracted with something far more interesting. Yes, as you've guessed, that kid was me, and yes, in 1998, I did try to convince my dad to move us into a house with a garage because somehow I was 100% sure I was not going to be Bill Gates without a garage. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I was, so, I was so planned and prepared for this. I even emotionally and mentally prepared myself uh, for the fact that at some point down the road, I would have to say goodbye to my most prized possession, my telescope, to fund my startup in that imaginary garage. Yeah, we never got a garage. So, to get a head start on my plan of Xena, the astrophysicist Bill Gates, I headed to Vanderbilt University to do a PhD in, guess what? Astrophysics. And then, a few months into it, it was this fateful fall morning, and I remembered so well, it was raining. And I was in the physics department, down on the second floor, in the basement, in that god-awful room with the flickering lights. Yes, it exists. And I heard the words, the wonder material of 21st century, the thinnest and strongest material ever existed. Those words were so fascinating, so full of potential, so science fiction-like, that they stopped me dead in my tracks. I literally couldn't move, I, I couldn't look away. That material is called graphene. And on that fateful fall morning, that one word changed the trajectory of the rest of my life. I wasted no time. I got a PhD in graphene, I did my postdoctoral work in graphene, I started my own company in graphene and suffered valiantly as an entrepreneur. It's true, yeah. And then I got involved in development of international standards for graphene, and then I was hired to run the National Graphene Association of the United States. So now you're thinking to yourself, what is this devil of a thing? What is graphene? So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to tell you about the extraordinary world of two-dimensional materials and graphene, and the way that they're going to be changing and impacting the world around us in the next three decades to come. So, what is graphene? Who here has ever used a pencil? Okay, yes, almost everyone. Okay. The lead in your pencil is basically graphite. Graphite is made of millions and millions of layers of carbon stacked on top of each other. The reason you can write with a pencil is because every time you do, thousands of those layers come off and sit on a paper, and that's what you can see. Now, if you were able to isolate only one of those layers, that my friends, would be called graphene. Graphene is one atomic layer of carbon. It is the thinnest and yet the strongest material we've ever seen. It is 200 times stronger than its equivalent weight in steel. And yet, it's extremely flexible. And if that was not enough to get your attention, it can be an excellent conductor of electricity and heat, and wait for it, it is transparent. Cool stuff. It was first isolated from graphite in 2004, and only six short years later, it won the Nobel Prize in physics. The discovery of graphene was so significant that it kind of started a frenzy, the kind of frenzy that would start if I came on this stage and said, hey guys, Santa's real. It really started that kind of frenzy in the scientific community. 
It started one of the fastest-paced research topics in the history of humankind. I was at Vanderbilt around that time. It was, it was a memorable period. Uh, there was such palpable excitement in the air. Everybody we knew all of a sudden was doing something in graphene. Uh, in the physics department, in our group, we were studying the interaction of electrons and photons, which is light, uh, in one million times a billionth of a second. And don't ask me why we do that. That will be another TED Talk. Our neighbors in electrical engineering, they were um, looking at graphene transistors. On the other side of the campus, our friends in biology and neuroscience, they were studying growing stem cells on graphene how to sequence DNA with graphene. For a while, we even had a website called Graphene Times. Yep, we had our own times for a while. It was truly a race to understand and explore as much as we could about this exotic new material that we just stumbled upon. And this intense and global race resulted in hundreds of thousands of scientific papers, 50,000 patents worldwide. It created this extensive base of knowledge that usually takes decades to put together. It came about in such a short period of time. And then the race slowed down. The scientists took a step back and said, yes, we studied the shit out of this. <laughs> and then the rest of the world said, okay, so what? And think about this. What good is science if it stays in the lab and does not change and better the world around us? One of the most thrilling and challenging parts of what I do in my line of work is that I get to work with industry, academia, government agencies, um, regulatory and standard bodies, investment groups, to facilitate the transition of graphene from the lab into the industry and into your hands. But it is an arduous and complex path. Most people do not realize that it usually takes 30 to 40 years from a discovery for it to go from the lab into a commercial product and onto consumer market. This path is going to be shorter for graphene, but it's still going to take time. The way that graphene is going to become a part of your life, the way that you're going to be seeing it impacting your world, is going to be a three-phase process. It's going to come in three distinct waves. The first one is going to be, okay, we've got a material in our hand that is better than many other ones that we've ever known, all right? Let's look around us, and you do the same thing when you go home for me. Look around you, look at the products and technologies around you, and think stronger, more flexible, more impermeable, more, more conductive. What could we make better with it? And you know what? Um, every single one of those ideas actually count. Uh, and they're probably going to make somebody rich, and that person could be you. So really go home and think about that. And let me also tell you this one other thing. Graphene was only the first of its clan that we stumbled upon. Since then, we have discovered a whole family of 2D materials, what I call a superhero family. <laughs> Super thin at the physical limit of thinness with properties like what we've never seen before. They truly give us this Lego set to play with and make the world around us better. And our, although graphene is very young, we already have a great number of products on the market. As we speak, graphene is used in fancy sports cars for lightweighting applications, where with addition of 1% of graphene, they get 20% reduction in weight and increase in strength. Graphene is used in your Mustang and your F-150 to reduce the noise of the engine. Graphene is used in sportswear, 
to thermally regulate and keep you cool as you run and you exercise. Graphene is even used in golf balls. And although I'm not a golfer, my friend Mike tells me that he gets 11 yards more on his drive. And I have absolutely no idea what that means. But he tells me, Zeno, you should be excited about it. So, Mike, I am. <laughs> and these are only a few examples. This is just the beginning. In the next few years, we're going to be seeing more and more products hitting the market that have been made better, more functional, more durable, more reliable with graphene. So keep an eye out. And then there is going to be a second wave. And this is going to be the wave of pure innovation and disruption. It is no longer about making something we already had better. It is about making possible what was impossible before. 2D materials are really a new species of materials. Yes, they are better from, uh, in, in properties than many others we know, but they also have this unique set of value propositions that make them different than anything else we've ever had. Think of graphene. Graphene is an excellent electricity conductor. What is a good electricity conductor? Metals. So in that sense, graphene is a metal, but it's transparent, and it's flexible, and it's made of carbon. Think of the potential with 2D materials. They are going to allow us to make some of our science fiction dreams come true, those things we thought about, but we didn't know how to make happen. They're going to make those things happen for us. And one of the most enjoyable parts of what I do in my work is that I have the privilege of working with forward-thinking academic institutions, research labs that are working on the next generation of technologies. And it is mind-blowing what they're working on. As we speak, they're working on graphene transparent force sensors that you can put in the corners of your eyes. And you can move your eyes around, and a drone moves right in front of you science fiction stuff. They're working on graphene transparent biomedical sensors where you can put it on your skin, you can't see it, it conforms to your skin, it can measure your EKG, your heart rate, your body temperature, and more. They're working on space elevators with graphene, they're working on Harry Potter newspaper flexible electronics with graphene. They are working on graphene solution that allows a mouse with a severed spine to walk in two weeks. Ooh, you go, Graphene! <laughs> it is going to take time, but this is the wave of disruption that 2D materials are going to be bringing to us. And then there is going to be a third wave and it's going to be the most exciting of them all. And if you ask me, Zina, what is it going to look like? I would have to tell you, I have absolutely no idea what it's going to look like. <laughs> 30 years from now, when we cannot envision our lives without 2D materials or graphene anymore, just like right now we cannot imagine our lives without plastics, without the internet, without our phones, that future is most likely not going to look like anything I just described to you. It is going to be completely different. And it is because technology is a living and breathing thing. Technology is not developed in a vacuum. Technology is developed in symbiotic relationship with other technologies that have not even been invented yet. Technology is developed with culture, with the needs and wants of an evolving human race. Half a century ago, we thought by now we would have flying cars. 
look around you, we don't. But we've got Uber, we've got Amazon, we've got Google Earth. If we really wanted flying cars, we would have had flying cars because we have the technology. We didn't want flying cars. The true path a technology takes in the long run cannot be predicted. We can try to forecast, we can try to plan for it, but just like the predicted plan of Xena, the astrophysicist Bill Gates, put me on the unpredicted path of graphene, which was not even an option when I was a kid. And a path that has been even more fascinating, more exhilarating, and more groundbreaking for me. In the same token, I cannot tell you where 2D materials are going in the next 30 years. But I can tell you, whatever form and shape they take, it is going to be more transformative, more revolutionary, and more impactful than anything we could envision right now. Think of this. At the advent of plastics and polymers, when we thought plastics were going to be used in replacing wooden structures or tires, did we ever think that a polymer-based product, the acrylic paint, would give birth to new movements in modern art, like abstract expressionism, that with the versatility, with the fluidity, with pigmentation, with fast-drawing nature of acrylic paints, we'd be able to paint these big, bold, vibrant blocks of color that were representative of a society in transition and a society in need of freedom of expression. We couldn't have predicted that. So I'm going to leave you with this. 2D materials are mighty tools in our toolkit. But your wants, your needs, and your dreams for you and for your children are so powerful, they dictate where 2D technologies are going to go. So that responsibility is on your shoulders. With that, go home, be bold, be imaginative, and dream on. Thank you.